Winter has arrived and many communities are coming together this holiday season. All that and more on this half hour of RTN News. Welcome to another episode of RTN News. I'm Victoria Todorova. And I'm Nate Aquino and here are today's local news. The cold winter days have approached and are having a negative impact on some people. A 52-year-old man ha was killed in a crash with a pickup truck Thursday night in Gloucester County. The poor road conditions are to blame after the snowstorm. Dr. Michael Robinson was pronounced dead at the scene of the crash. There is one other fatal car accident that occurred during the storm that is still under investigation. Last week was Thanksgiving, and to spread the season of thankfulness, Washington Township Schools and the Washington Township community came together for the Gobble Up Hunger Campaign. This event br brought the community together to create Thanksgiving baskets for the needy local residents. The baskets included canned goods, assorted vegetables, and huge turkeys. The food was donated by the community members, Bettina ShopRite, and many more helpful sponsors. The holiday season is around the corner, and one town is ready to celebrate. Washington Township is hosting its annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony on December 7th at 7 p.m. at the Washington Township Lake Park. The event will be filled with lots of fun for the whole family. Hot chocolate and cookies will be served for everyone. Frosty the Snowman is making a guest appearance, and the school choir will be singing Christmas carols on stage. And of course, Santa himself will be there. In the town of Pittman, Warner Brothers has recently made the Pittman Potter Festival disappear. Even though they changed the, the, the event name to the Pittman Festival that must not be named to avoid copyright infringement, Warner Brothers are strict when it comes to copyright and trademarks of the Harry Potter franchise. The nonprofit festival was aimed to celebrate the spirit of magic within the Harry Potter world and to promote local community and its arts. Warner Brothers uh, said that this past year's Pittman Potter will be the last one ever. Coming up, we will dive into events happening on Rowan's campus this week. Don't go away. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Welcome back to RTN News. Here is Kristen with this week's entertainment. Thank you, Victoria. Rowan's Essay Choir and the Statesman Men's Choir will perform this evening at Flieger Concert Hall. The Essay Choir will be performing songs from various musicals such as Wicked, the song Cups, When I'm Gone, and more. The Statesman Choir will be performing Canadian folk songs, a Latin canticle, and more songs from different Canadian artists. The show tonight is from 8 to 9.30 p.m. and tickets start at $5 for non-Rowan students who would like to attend. Rowan's Contemporary Music Ensemble will be performing tomorrow night at Boyd Recital Hall. They will offer selections ranging from experimental concepts on the cutting edge to more traditional contemporary repertoire as well. Additionally, pro programs often feature original works by student composers. The performances are November 28th from 8 to 9.30 p.m. and admission is free and open to the public. Rowan's Art Gallery welcomes guest curator Amy Potsik this Thursday with a new exhibition called Enamored Armor. Three female artists reframe the cultural construct of feminine as empowering in the exhibit. The artists explore the multiple ways in which women choose to present and redefine themselves in pursuit of self-discovery. The gallery is located at 301 High Street West, where the opening reception and artist talk is November 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. The exhibit will be on display until January 12, 2019. 
first off, happy birthday. Thank you so happy much. Happy birthday. 22. It feels weird because like, I feel like 21 was like, you know, the last important birthday and then 22 is kind of no. like, Happy birthday. I mean, I'm excited to turn 21 this year, but yeah, the yeah. So choirs sound pretty interesting. I was a choir mm -hmm. boy myself in high school. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah a, I actually went to, to a um, jazz, I think, ensemble last week, and it was oh, actually really? really good. Yeah, That's I figured, cool. oh, let me just go to one of these, and it was actually really great. Like, they were really professional, and oh, I was yeah. really surprised. Yeah, without a doubt. And the yeah. art exhibit. They always yes. have. Art they always have really and cool and exhibits. Yeah, and three ladies go ladies. That's pretty right. cool. Go Girl ladies. power. All right, <laughs> thank you. Coming up, more local news. So don't go away. Got a quarter. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Welcome back to RTN News. Here is more from your local area. Black Friday is one of the most anticipated events of the year, and this year was no different from the previous times. Over at the Gloucester Premium Outlets, many of its stores were opened the night of Thanksgiving for pre-Black Friday sales and extended holiday hours to give the customers enough time to do their shopping. Due to it being the busiest time of the year, officials predicted that there were going to be an increase in traffic growth and at least a 15% increase overall for all the retail stores. More on giving, Washington Township softball team The Comets are sending soldiers care packages overseas. They have partnered with Deptford resident Caroline Cornelius. Her goal is to send 300 packages to soldiers. Cornelius runs the nonprofit military appreciation project Santa and Supplies. The girls on the softball team bought 24 items on their own to make 24 packages to contribute. And now here's Jashanti with What's Trending. Thank you, Victoria. A burger restaurant has been shut down in Hawaii due to two employees sharing a video of them joking and laughing while grilling a rant on the grill where they cook their burgers. The owner of a local restaurant said it's embarrassing to think that two of their employees would try to tarnish their 20-year reputation. Legal actions will be taken amongst the former employees who recorded the now viral video. We all heard that a dog is a man's best friend, but did you know that dogs are good for your health? Yes, you heard that right. New studies have shown that having your dog sleep in bed will increase the way that you sleep. A study was conducted on multiple women and comparing how sleeping with their p partners made them disrupted and comparing how sleeping with a dog brought them comfort. Did you participate in the Black Friday sales to get an early start on Christmas gifts? Well, this year, people have seen to get an early start on sales when starting on Thanksgiving. American Total has spent a record-breaking $3.7 billion on Thanksgiving Day alone this year, making a 27.5% increase from last year. That's crazy, wow. like all that money spent on Thanksgiving Day, like not even Black Friday. Yeah, it's Imagine. a little upsetting too because they're taking people away from their homes during yeah. dinner, but it's it is right. what it is. <laughs> but people's dogs are at home, so that's, that's always that's good. That's always good. You have to Better spend time sleep. with your puppies yeah. and get Wish your sleep. I, had a dog. <laughs> I wish I had a dog. One day. One, One day. day. One day. Yep. <laughs> all right, thank you. Coming up, your national news.
Welcome back. Here is Frank with your national news. Thanks, Victoria. Police in Manhattan have reunited a dog with her owners after the puppy went on a 14-hour squirrel hunt through New York's Upper East Side. The NYPD's 19th Precinct tweeted out a photo of Chloe, the puppy, after officers found her Friday night. According to the police, Chloe was out for a walk with her, no with her owners around 7 a.m. when a neighbor squirrel caught her attention. Chloe took off after the, squirrel, after, the, after the squirrel, and that's when the police officers were brought in to help with the search. The 19th Precinct also thanked the nearby 33rd Precinct for helping down uh, on tracking Chloe. There was no word if she actually got to catch the squirrel. Um, Sergeant Brian Maynard delivered a baby on a highway in North Carolina. Maynard saw a car spinning 85 miles per, per hour and pulled Jimmy and Laura Baker to the side of the road. Jimmy Baker told Brian Maynard that his wife was about to have a baby, but they didn't have time to reach the hospital. Maynard stated, quote, I said, okay, well, we're going to do this right here, me and you, end quote. The Bakers and Maynard delivered a healthy baby. Maynard is a husband and also a father to a 2011-year-old girl. He said that he brought back memories and that he plans to stay in touch with the family. A, US, a UPS driver in Grand Island, New York, decided to adopt a shelter dog after he ran and jumped into the U UPS truck. Jason Coronado was delivering packages to the Buffalo City Animal Shelter when he saw Ernie, uh, a pit bull terrier mix. Coronado said, I call him up to the truck and he pretty much just hopped right in, end quote. For a couple of minutes, Ernie refused to leave the truck, but he eventually got out. After Coronado completed his work day, he decided to talk about adopting Ernie and his family, with his fam adopting Ernie with his family, and everyone's on board. Two days in, and Ernie follows Col Colorado around, no training necessary. Wow, Frank, such great stories. Yeah, Ernie got adopted, a baby was delivered, were, and, and the dog is home safe. Yeah. I need a and dog yeah. ASAP. <laughs> yeah. so. hey, listen, those are the best stories I could find, and they Puppies just made me happy. Puppies and babies. No, this, is, yeah. this makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, I want I to share them with the world. It's <laughs> a know. good time. It's so, a good time. It's it really is. Time. I love dogs. I'm glad everyone's happy and safe and at home. Yeah, and at home. Yeah, of yeah, course. Home. Like of course. Of to new homes and old homes. Coming up, your weekly sports update. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to RTN News, and here is Mike with your Rowan Sports Update. Thanks, Victoria. The Rowan men's basketball team extend their win streak to four after an 86-75 win over Rutgers Camden. The game started out slow in the first half, but picked up in the second half where Nick DePersia led the scoring with 26 points in the game, including seven three-pointers. Connor Dickerson also had an impact in this one as he came off the bench to score 10 points for the Brown and Gold. Rowan are 4-0 this season and will host TCNJ on Wednesday. The Rowan women's basketball team came up short on the road against Albright University. The Profs lost 66-61 and now hold a 2-3 record. Rowan started out hot in the first half by gaining a 14-7 lead over the Lions. However, the Brown and Gold slipped up in the second half, allowing Albright to cut the deficit and get back into the game. From there, both sides looked even until the Lions gained a small 6-point lead that the Profs couldn't get over. The Profs host their first home game against TCNJ on Wednesday. The Rowan dive team traveled to Carnegie Mellon Invitational. Chad Shire took fourth place in the 100-meter dive, while Christian Termine and Matt Hoy came in 10th and 12th respectively. Claudia Arzakovich got fifth place on the three-meter board. 
Sounds like we had a good uh, time for sports, man. Yeah, I mean, other than the the whole thing with the women's basketball team, I mean, we're having a really good winter season. Mm -hmm. We're starting out really good. If if the men's team can do anything like the field hockey team, we won't be able to write any stories like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be amazing. You just can't write stories like you this? You just can't. They had a great season. I expect big things from this basketball team. And you just got to keep the momentum uh, going, man. Yeah, and, you know, I hope that the, the women's basketball team find a little luck. I mean, they're playing at home for the first time. So, you know, sometimes you just need a little bit of the home crowd. Home field advantage. Yeah, mm, I mean, all you need. two and three and all you've played are away games. I mean, it'll make a difference. You'll see. Bring it home. Go yep. profs. Go yes. profs. Go profs. And that's all for this week's edition of RTN News. I'm Victoria Todorova. And I'm Nate Aquino. Stay tuned for next week's show. Have a good day, everyone.